Well, it's a new year and that means new possibilities for all of us. And every year people make resolutions for the new year, but they just don't seem to follow through. So on Community, we hope to inspire you to follow through. I'm Quadi Ewing. And I'm Pete Gallivan. Today we are taking you inside the Niagara Falls Underground Railroad Heritage Center, a place that celebrates new starts for so many enslaved people. And that's what a new year is all about. We're going to go back into the past a little later in the show. But first, the story of a young man who found a new perspective on life through the game of golf. Golf may be a game of inches, but what Jim Horn teaches his students is a long drive that goes far beyond the fairway. I, I've come a long way through golf, but it was more about the discipline that he taught me. James Blackwell began taking lessons when he was five from this UB basketball great turned golf lover and instructor. Jim has been opening up the links to mostly inner city kids who might not ever have this opportunity since 1997. He has taught more than 500 students with more than 10 of them playing collegiately, including James who played at and now coaches at Ball State. What did it teach you about life? I mean, pretty much everything. Uh, everything is, in life, it's up and it's down. I mean, I'm 24 years old, and I, when I was younger, I used to get really upset if I didn't perform well. And Horn and my father and the group of guys that I had around me, they would come in and be like, this is all part of it. So how can you bounce back? It teaches you discipline. It teaches you fortitude. And it teaches you how to be aggressive. And when you get knocked down, it teaches you how to get back up and do it again. And the foundation got a bit of a Christmas present from the Wester Auto Group this year, a $5,000 grant to help them continue to break down barriers, stereotypes, and give kids a new path to their future. To see these kids out here getting an opportunity to expand their horizons and something they'll use later in life with what Jim is teaching here is just, just makes your holiday. The spirit of giving is something that inspires others to do the same. I'm trying to pay it forward. I mean, he's done this for, for decades of paying it forward. So he's a, he's a good role model and the staff that he has around him is also paying it forward. So you kind of grow up in that environment where paying it forward is the only way. Coming up, we're in the community on Niagara Street. We're at LMF, La Movement Fitness. Hey, Lala. It's easy. It doesn't have to be hard. Focusing on those single things small things to do every single month. Welcome back to Community. Now, we're going to be taking you into the center in just a little bit, but first, we want to talk about New Year's resolutions because that's what the New Year means to a lot of people, and that's why a lot of gyms are packed at least for the time being. You're right. Going to the gym, however, can be quite a chore. Not everybody likes to go to the gym, so I found a place where it's not about the gym. It's about having a little rhythm, working out. Let's go inside. One, two. This is a fitness class with a little hmm. You already get the point. This is a way to change for the better by moving. Dance is universal. For most people, whether you have two left feet or you have it all together, you can get your heart rate up, you can have fun, and you can keep moving. Lala Wood started La Movement Fitness in 2013 as she struggled with weight loss goals and trying to stay motivated. Eight years ago with my personal journey, um, I was over 200 pounds. I was tired all the time. I was living the adult life, working long hours, staying up late, not getting enough rest. She reconnected with the dance. And everyone was asking, what did you do? How did you do it? And I'm like, I just got up and got active. The model for the business. Get up, get active, or Guga, like our kids like to say. <laughs> It may be a secret Buffalo movement with a mission that is, well, let's just say, it's moving. We're talking about 2019. Yes. A whole new year. Absolutely. People are like, I want a whole new you. How do you do that? The best thing to do is start now. Um, summer bodies, because everybody wants to look good in the summer. The good thing about Buffalo is it's generally cold here more times than not, and summer bodies are made in the winter. So we have nine long months to get it together. <laughs> 
So Lala thought she'd put me to work while in a skirt. Check it out. Focus on one thing at a time. Things that you can measure, things that you can keep track of so that you can have that success. The struggles that people have is there's an idea as to what fitness looks like, what it's supposed to be. You're supposed to go to the gym, you're supposed to do this, and that's not necessarily the case. You just need to get your heart rate up and you need to get active. La Movement has different styles of dance classes. We also do heels classes, we do hip hop, um, so anything that you can really think of, African, Afro beats, uh, so a bunch of different styles to dance, make it fun, get up and get active. Because the gym isn't always right for everyone. The reason why I struggle with my weight loss is because as an African American woman, that's not something that was present growing up. Healthy eating and working out are important. So that's something that we're very passionate about changing for black and brown people to really educate them on the importance of health and wellness. Uh, we are prevalent to dying from heart disease and a lot of things that are caused that can be prevented from simple exercise and eating better. And that's why she's created exercises that work for all. So that's why we may do a twerk class for women or a heels class for women, which also promotes um, confidence. The flip side of it is they're actually working out and they don't even know it. Um, so they come in in their heels, so you're working your calf, you're working your core, because that's what you need to stand up and really execute anything in heels. <laughs> you may even find a live DJ. I'm up here, I'm dancing, I'm enjoying the music as well. I actually come down to the class and I actually dance with them as well to motivate them to push them because it can become tiresome at times. Okay, you've been playing music, but I don't see any sweat. <laughs> if you zoom in. <laughs> and so at the end, they're like, I just had a workout, like this was actually a workout. I actually feel good, but they feel good about it. So for 2019, we just want to reach more people in the community, really expanding um, people's knowledge of what it takes to live a healthier lifestyle. There's so many myths out there and people make it so tough and it's easy. It doesn't have to be hard. Focusing on those single things, small things to do every single month, finding an activity that you love, come dance with us. Partnerships with businesses, silent dance fitness, karaoke dance fitness, and she's taken her program into the schools. It's also a you know alternative way to get the parents involved. So the good thing in the community is that we're talking to the kids, we're talking to the parents, and we're bringing it off full circle. Making fitness fun. Great work, ladies. Great work. This Western New York singer will certainly make you feel all right and inspire you to follow your dreams this new year, no matter what challenges you might face. That's next on Community. Well, welcome back to Community, and we are just moments away from taking a tour of this great facility. Can't wait. Uh, but, you know, the new year is also a time to look back and reflect on a lot of the challenges that we've already overcome. Exactly. There is a woman in Niagara Falls. She has been singing for years. She's faced so many challenges, but she has a new song. Who knows if I'm wrong, if I'm right? Tell me what am I to do? Marsha McWilson Someday has been singing right. since age six. When you came to my house, it was a full reality show before reality shows existed. You've probably seen her all around Western New York singing at functions, and McWilson is not just a singer, but a songwriter. She's also had some acting roles and she's a motivational speaker. But it's her singing, even in nursing homes, that touches hearts. A 96-year-old man came to me and he says, I am a um, war vet 
And you know, you've really, really touched my heart with singing. She even goes into schools. If I know I gotta sing to you, I'm gonna go find out what you like. She's a girl with a diamond ring. You know she can shake her face. And if I find out what you like, you're in trouble because I'm getting ready to get in your heart, honey. The wife and mother of two sons just wants her singing career to take off. When I see someone low, and then I can just all of a sudden just look at them and say, you know what? Smile. Smile because guess what? There is a bright sunshine in the world out there. And if I can put that in the music and I can say, um, if you're happy and you know it, clap your hands. If you're happy and you know it, clap your hands. She sings to bring happiness to people. It happened on the Tom Joyner Fantastic Voyage Cruise, which is star-studded. And guess what? A little girl from Niagara Falls have been doing that cruise, which is a miracle. It's really not heard of because I don't have a major record deal. My lonely days are over. And she sang backup once for Michael Bublé, Shirley Caesar, and B.B. King's daughter at the Blues Fest in Niagara Falls. What do you want? What do I really want? I want to have a career in doing what I love to do. And that is? That is uplifting and motivating people. McWilson is releasing a new single called Halftime. That means when you're 50, baby, it is up to you to win this game. You've worked for everyone else 50 years ago. Now the other 50 should be for you. Love yourself. Take care of yourself. Because guess what? It's halftime. I'm real. Um, what you see is what you get. I'm not fake, not phony. So I'm passionate at what I do. I love people. I need a balance to hold me up so that I won't fall. They say you can't know where you're going until you know where you've been. Everyday people have a story to tell, and that story is something that can be used to help empower present-day freedom seekers in terms of addressing a lot of the modern-day injustices that we still see today. We take a step back into Western New York's rich history of providing a path to freedom for so many. That's just ahead on Community. One step, freedom. How sweet that is. Yeah, no kidding. We are here at the Niagara Falls Underground Railroad Heritage Center. And the last stop is the Freedom Gallery. And it really kind of knocks home the, the, the idea that freedom isn't just this big concept. It's about people. You know, look at some of the signs. Let us not drink from the cup of hatred to satisfy our thirst for freedom. That says a lot. Oh, without a doubt. And you know who else says a lot? This guy. Saladin Allah. Let's go meet oh, him. Maybe that guy too. Oh, is that you? <laughs> that's, that's my more attractive twin. Right <laughs> you have quite a story to tell. Yeah. You are a descendant Absolutely. of a freedom fighter. Absolutely. Talk um, to me. Uh, Josiah Henson, um, he, are you familiar with the book Uncle Tom's Cabin? Oh, yeah. Okay. Well, Harry Beecher Stowe, that wrote the book, she used my great, great, great grandfather, Josiah Henson, as the narrative behind Get Uncle out. Tom. Really? Absolutely. Wow. In this day and age, <clears throat> Uncle Tom has got a kind of a negative context mm -hmm. to it, and that that's, couldn't be anything further from the truth. Absolutely. Um, he was a leader of a black militia during the rebellion in 1837. He established the Dawn Settlement, a whole community of freedom seekers who arrived on the Canadian side. He actually was instrumental in constructing the British American Institute. So he did a lot of different things that uh, Uncle Tom wouldn't be credited with doing. He remained enslaved for 41 years of his life. 
he actually strived to buy his manumission papers at one point, but his enslaver actually tricked him into giving him, you know, not allowing him to buy his actual freedom. And at one point he realized that his enslaver was having trouble managing his plantation and he was sold down the river literally mm -hmm. to his brother's plantation in Kentucky and it was at that point that he decided at the age of 41 years old to leave enslavement and he walked over 500 miles from Kentucky, crossed over in Fort Erie right outside of where Buffalo is and mm -hmm. established himself in a small community called Little Africa at the time. The, the journey took over a month and that's what some people oftentimes don't understand. It wasn't like if a person was enslaved in the South, they jumped in a Tesla and drove to freedom. So Josiah Henson, two of his children were so small that he had to carry him in a knapsack on his back the entire journey. Wow. So oftentimes you have people who were everyday people doing very notable things and oftentimes their stories may be so enraptured with trauma that they may not share that with the next generation. So those stories are just as equally as important as stories of freedom because it shows you the sense of resilience and the infinite potential that a person possesses to be able to overcome certain obstacles in their life. My grandmother was born in St. Catharines, which is probably about a half an hour from here. She moved over here into Niagara Falls, New York. My father was born, and I'm one of my father's children. How does this all make you feel? I mean, think mm -hmm. about your storied history, and then you're in a freedom gallery. Mm -hmm. Everyday people have a story to tell, and that story is something that can be used to help empower present-day freedom seekers in terms of addressing a lot of the modern-day injustices that we still see today. So when you look at the freedom gallery, you see people with different perspectives, people from different ethnicities, ages, genders, and they all have a story to share. The common theme is freedom. These quotes that you see on the red arrows throughout the exhibit, these are modern quotations. So the stories that we tell are of surprising heroes on the Underground Railroad who either lived in Niagara Falls or worked in Niagara Falls, passed through Niagara Falls, crossing one more river to get to freedom in Canada. The uh, suspension bridge was a major player in Niagara Falls. This is the bridge that Harriet Tubman crossed and other freedom seekers. And it uh, was in the location where the Whirlpool Bridge is. When you see this illustration and you just see the, the, the steps people had to take you know, the bridge is one thing, but scaling that gorge and getting down to the river and then making your way in a rowboat across the mighty Niagara. You might have been running for your life because you were actually being pursued. And, you know, fly down these steps and, and jump into a rowboat and row yourself across. Where the Maid of the Mist is today, that's the location of where these rowboats would cross back and forth. The Cataract House uh, and the wait staff who worked inside the Cataract House are the, the heroes of our stories. This was a center of Underground Railroad activity. The waiters were secret agents. The wait staff at the Cataract House Hotel was all African American, and many of them had been born into slavery but were now living and working here in freedom. And by day, they were serving in the dining room, but uh, behind the scenes, they were escorting freedom seekers across the river to Canada. We talk about freedom seekers. But this is a, also a celebration of the folks who helped those freedom seekers find the freedom they were seeking. Right, and in our stories, those helpers were black men here at the Cataract House Hotel. Oftentimes, we think of abolitionists as white Quakers. And that certainly is true, but here in Niagara Falls, that story was much larger. Picking up a souvenir? Why not? This yeah. was quite a tour, and just hearing the stories and being able to speak with a descendant of a freedom fighter, you just don't get that anywhere yeah, else. Without a doubt. What a way to mark new starts. By the way, we want to hear your story. Send it to us at WGRZ.com. But for now, in the immortal words of Harriet Tubman, check it out. We out. See you next time on Community.